السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السيدات والسادة المشاهدين الأعزاء أهلا وسهلا بكم في اليوم العلمي الثالث لكلية إدارة الأعمال انطلاقا من أهداف الجامعة الليبية الدولية وتنمية منتسبيها علميا وثقافيا تحتضن اليوم كلية إدارة الأعمال فعاليات اليوم العلمي للعام الدراسي 2022-2023 حيث سيعرض على حضراتكم مجموعة من الأنشطة العلمية لطلاب الكلية ونستهل هذا اليوم بكلمة يلقيها السيد عميد كلية إدارة الأعمال الدكتور صبري جبران الكرم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد النبي الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السيدة وسادة الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأسعد الله وقاتكم بكل خير نلتقي بكم مجددا في اليوم العلمي الثالث لكلية إدارة الأعمال بالجامعة الليبية الدولية للعام الدراسي 2022-2023 نستعرض معكم في هذا الصباح جملة من البحوث والدراسات العلمية التي أنجزها طلاب الكلية خلال العام الدراسي 2022-2023 حيث ركز هذه البحوث والدراسات على القضايا المجتمعية والشؤون الاقتصادية والإدارية والمالية التي علاقة بالاقتصاد الوطني كما قدمت هذه الدراسات والبحوث العديد من المضامين والتوصيات التي يؤمل من يؤمل من خلالها ان تسهم في معالجه تحديات الاقتصاد الوطني في الختام نتمنى ان تكون هذه الدراسات والبحوث مفيده والله من وراء القصد والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته اما الان نستعرض على حضراتكم مجموعه من الانشطه العلميه للطلاب تحت اشراف نخبه من اعضاء هيئه التدريس بالكليه نتمنى لحضراتكم مشاهدة طيبة This is the table of contents, starting from introduction to recommendation. As an introduction, the private sector became more important throughout the past years, uh, and it's important to measure the patient satisfaction to meet the high level of expectations that patients have to uh, this sector. And it is important to measure, uh, to use a good measuring tool to understand uh, the uh, dimensions within uh, the uh, inside the satisfaction. In this project, I'm following the circle quad approach using the five dimensions we mentioned, uh, which are the assurance, empathy, responsiveness, uh, tangibility, and reliability. This is the main definitions for the project, patient satisfaction, private healthcare sector, service quality, and healthcare quality. The research importance, uh, the research problem. Uh, as the research problem, it is important to measure, as I mentioned earlier, the patient satisfaction. But, but because of the lack of papers that conduct the same topic that my project is discussing, it is important to uh, understand how can measuring patient satisfaction affect the healthcare service quality in the in the private sector. And how, can, and, and how can it improve the uh, quality of services. This is the main or the primary objective for the project, starting from measuring the patient satisfaction, uh, identify which of the dimensions uh, of healthcare services are patient satisfied with, to identify if there is any significant difference among the response, uh, among uh, demographic factors, and lastly to put some recommendation. And this is the research hypothesis. Because of the importance of the private sector and the high level of expectation that patients have to uh, this uh, sector, uh, healthcare providers and healthcare management managers need to pay more attention about this topic. This project will help both of them 
to know more how uh, the how can the patient satisfaction or how the measuring of the patient satisfaction can affect the healthcare uh, services in the private sector. The theoretical this is the theoretical framework. It's basically talking about the patient satisfaction and the connection between or the concept that include both medical and non-medical aspects in healthcare, and as well as the cervical approach and the five dimension included. The research methodology. Uh, to conduct a project or research, you need to follow a specific approach. Uh, in this project, uh, we followed a quantitative method. Uh, the data collection tool was a uh, questionnaire, was revised by Dr. Sabri, my supervisor. Uh, it was following the cervical approach, including five di different dimensions, as I mentioned earlier. And the rating scale was uh, the, common, the, the commonly used which is the five record scale, starting from uh, strongly disagree to strongly agree. Uh, the uh, data sample was uh, decided according to the uh, Cradle Organ table, which is, should be between 382 to 385. In the, uh, and the response to this project was only 342. And the sample size was decided according to the table by Craven Morgan. Uh, the sample size should be between 382 uh, to 385. And the total response in this project was only 324. The questioning was divided into two sections. The first section collected uh, demographic uh, information including gender, nationality, place of residence, level of education, and the type of job. The second section was to measure the level of satisfaction among patients uh, with the private sectors uh, using the cervical approach. This section uh, is divided into five dimensions, the dimensions that I mentioned earlier, uh, and the overall satisfaction. The data analysis, the data were analyzed using SPS, uh, SPSS version 28. The tests used in this project to analyze the data were uh, first the re reliability Kronbach alpha test, frequency test, descriptive statistic, normality test, and after reviewing the, the results of the normality test uh, for hypothesis testing, we used the binomial test, Manwitney and Kloskin walls. This is the instrument reliability, the analysis of demographic factors, the, the test of normality, the binomial test, Mann-Whitney test, which is used to uh, analyze the uh, two variables uh, dimensions, cross cut walls test, which is used to measure uh, three or more variables. And the key results. The reliability of the cervical dimensions in the questionnaire were all high, uh, higher than 80%, which means the questionnaire was reliable. Most participants were female and the minority were male. 260 participants were Libyan, while 64 were non. Um, and, and to the hypothesis accepting and rejecting, accepting each one, which is our patient satisfied with the healthcare services in the private hospitals, accepting each zero, which is the, uh, there is no significant difference among participants' response in uh, gender, accepting each one, there is a significant difference among participants' response in nationality, accepting each one as well, that there is a significant difference uh, response in age and rejecting each, uh, rejecting each one and, and accepting each zero uh, accepting each zero that there is no significant difference among participants respond in place of residence accepting each zero there is no significant difference among participants response in the level of education and last there is a significant difference among participants in the type of job, which means accepting each one. The limitation, 
The first thing that uh, faced me through the project was the lack of papers about this topic. As far as I know, that there was no previous research about, the, uh, about measuring the patient satisfaction in private sector in Libya. Second was the number of response, uh, the number that should be covered in, in the project because of the sample size of the country was 385, but the number of response that uh, it got um, on the questionnaire was only 324. For the recommendation, uh, the first thing that I could recommend to next researcher or student that will conduct a same study as mine is to look for enough research and uh, previous uh, projects that have the same uh, method, method that follow the same methodology as the same methodology that you're following, so it could uh, help you to get more reliable uh, projects. The second thing that I would recommend uh, is to try to get a bigger sample size to help you to understand more, <clears throat> more uh, of the overall satisfaction in the patient's opinion about the private healthcare services. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Saja Laud. I'm fourth year graduated from Atlimo, from finance and bank management. Um, today I'm going to present my graduation project, which is testing the capital asset pricing model in Bosch, Malaysia. So my table of contents started with introduction and ending for, uh, with the future research. As introduction, basically, CAPM is, uh, is a relationship between the risk and return. So uh, many model approach to, ter to determine the trade-off between the risk and return when investing in the stock or portfolio. So asset price model referred to the CAP, as the CAPM is one of the most well-knowing model of in financial area and this model depends on mathematical mathematical equation it's too easy to use or apply and only includes single variable which is the systematic risk to explain the excess return of uh, the asset in the portfolio this is the research Problem is that the CAPM is appreciated model to explain the stock return in Bursut Malaysia. A uh, research important is the important of this research is lying to try to open uh, to answer the open question in the CAPM is a good uh, model to explain the excess return of the stock. Uh, this, is to, uh, this study is attempt to answer the open question through the application of the capital asset pricing model in Bosset, Malaysia. So this is a literature review. And the hypothesis is the, the hypothesis is the capital is the cap M is not obligation uh, explaining the excess return in portfolio in Bosset, Malaysia. And the capital uh, application is an exploitation and research on uh, Bosset Malaysia. The excess return of a portfolio cannot be explained by the excess return of market portfolio on Bosset Malaysia over the examining period. It's the excess return of portfolio can be explained by the excess return of the market of Bosset Malaysia over the examining period. And this is the methodology. Is that huh? here we have the result which was first we have Darwin Weston result which is to tell us that there is a correlation between the years or not is that the years dependent in each other or not which it was 2.2 .2, which means there's no correlation between the years and here we have OLS uh, result, which is the number of examining period 48, and R square what 46, which means the 46 of the result can be explained by the cup M, and other can explain by other factors. Here we have limitation. Our limitation is our data is so old. Uh, examining period was from December 
2016 to 2010. It's time in study also. There is lack of study that tested in Cap uh, M in both Malaysia, which are another limitation. And recommendation, the finding of this study should be not utilized to make any future investment decision since any such uh, chose study it's been based on through invest, uh, investigation and conjunction with the expert and the broker in the sector. And here we have the future research for future study research with success, uh, success is to investigate whether FAMA and phrase 1933 factor model of FAMA and phrase 2015 is five factor model of fashion model to explain the portfolio uh, return in Borset Malaysia. And thank you. Hello, my name is Mundur al -Jihani. I'm a student at Limo and I specialize in healthcare management. And today I will be presenting my graduation project. So I will be speaking about satisfaction with medical services in medical hospitals in Libya. These are my contents, which include introduction, definitions, research problem, research objectives and hypothesis, research importance, then we have the literature review, the research methodology, data collection tool, the instrument validity, data analysis, instrument reliability, demographic data analysis, and we have descriptive statistics for all the dimensions, normality test, hypothesis testing, lastly but not uh, least but not last, results, limitations, and then we have recommendations and implications. So as an introduction, the health sector plays a critical role in maintaining a long-term general economic growth in emerging countries. So as we know, health is a very uh, important role as a whole economy. So we must maintain it really well. So we have the two main definitions in my project, which are service quality and serve qual model. So for server quality, um, Kotcher and Keller had a really nice definition about it. Any intangible act or performance that one party offers to any other that does not result in ownership of anything. And for the surf model, it's a five dimension um, scale which, we used, which is used in the researches and it contains a five dimension which I'll be explaining later on. So um, according to Andalib, the health sector plays a critical role in maintaining long-term general economic growth in emerging countries. So as a whole, healthcare is really important and we must maintain it really well. So for my two main definitions, I have service uh, quality and I have serve qual model. So a really nice definition for service quality was provided by Cottrell and Keller. Any intangible act or performance that one party offers to any other that does not result in the ownership of anything. And for my surf core model, it's basically a five-dimensional, multi-dimensional research instrument used to assess consumer expectations and perceptions. So, research problem. In various areas around the world, uh, satisfaction is neglected, which causes problems for the consumer in receiving the right treatment. So that's the problem I'm trying to conduct here. Um, as, uh, as we said before, there was a study conducted in Libya in 2015 to examine the relationship between service quality dimensions and patient satisfaction which really stresses the point uh, of what I'm testing. So these are my research objectives. I'm trying to find that the level of customer's satisfaction with the service offered to them by public hospitals, and to find out the extent of services the patients are satisfied or dissatisfied with, to identify if there are any significant differences among participants, and to put forward particular recommendations. So these are my hypotheses. Uh, we have H0H1, H0H1S, H0R, H0R, and H0A, H0A. And then we keep going, going until D. So for my research importance, uh, this project centers on patient satisfaction with Libyan public hospitals. Moreover, the findings are relevant for healthcare managers and healthcare institutions. So for my literature reviews, I had 18 papers reviewed, 91% of them was uh, quantitative and the other 9% uh, were all qualitative. So for my theoretical framework, we have satisfaction in healthcare sector and patient satisfaction. And then we have the dimensions of service quality, as I said before, there are five. Um, research methodologies. This graduation project uses a quantitative research method. An online service was distributed using social media platforms. And within two days, the survey had 411 responses. So we use something called the Likert scale, which is a, a five-point uh, scale. 
it has strongly disagree until strongly agree. So for the population, um, it was predicted for the population of Libya to be around 6.85 million people. And for the sample size, we used the Kretsch and Morgan table. So data collection tool. The questionnaire was divided into five sections, uh, the first of which was designed to evaluate the reliability of the hypothesis. Of the, hypothesis. the second portion was to sat testify about the responsiveness of the dimension, and then the assurance, and the fourth about the empathy, and last about the tangibility. So instrument validity, the first part includes demographic data information. Um, a variety of questions are included in the questionnaires, and the, these questions are included to elect information about demographic characteristics. Uh, the data is analyze, anal analyzed using the statistical package of social sciences, which is SPSS, and I used the version 28. I had four main tests, which are reliability, frequency, descriptive statistics, and normality test. After I've done the normality test, I figured out that my data was non-parametric, so I had to use three tests, which are the binomial test, the Mann-Whitney test, and lastly, the Kruskal-Wallis test. So for the instrument reliability, um, basically, there's something called Cronbach's alpha, and it has to be above 0.7 for your data to be reliable. And um, fortunately, I had all my uh, dimensions above 0.7. So uh, these are my demographic information analysis. Um, this is a continuous information of the age group. Then we have the social status, the education, and the occupation. Then we have the test of normality. Um, these are, um, that shows that if my data is parametric or non-parametric, and it turned out to be uh, non-parametric. So this is my first uh, descriptive statistics for the first dimension, tangibility. Secondly, responsiveness. Third, assurance. Fourth, reliability. Fifth, empathy. And then we have the hypothesis test, which I'll be explaining, uh, with, sorry, the binomial test, which I'll be explaining. So the, the table 19 shows that the binomial test indicates that there, are, there is a statistical significance. Additionally, 0 uh, 0 0.64 is larger than 0 0.50. This leads to accepting uh, my uh, H0R that our patients are not satisfied with the reliability dimension of living in public hospitals. And then we reject the other uh, hypothesis, which patients are satisfied with the reliability dimension of living in public hospitals. So there's table 20. Then we have table 22 explaining the uh, significance, as I said. <clears throat> then we go on to the man with me. So table 27 shows that there is a significant difference among females and males in tangibility, reliability, assurance, and empathy. So along all the dimensions, we have a significant difference between the males and the females. This is the cross wallace test, which shows that there is a significant difference in reliability and responsiveness. And however, no significant difference is found in terms of tangibility, assurance, and empathy. So this is the continuous of the cross wallace test income level. And then these are the results. In terms of public hospitals in Libya, results indicate that quality plays a big part in gaining satisfaction, and significant difference was found among respondents' views that can be attributed to demographic factors, gender, social status, age, and occupation, and income level. So these are my results. The data shows that the respondents are major. The majority are females. The age group of 18 to 30 are high at 83.9, uh, the single are 79.1, bachelor's degree holders are the highest at 53.1. In terms of occupation, students are at 60.9%. And then we have the people who live in a large city are at 89.7%, and the income level that is less than 1,000 Libyan dinners is at 54.3%. So these are my descriptive statistics results. And then we have the summary of hypothesis. So lastly, we have the limitation. The first limitation of the study is the lacks, lack of previous papers to, uh, to check on. The second is the fact that the female percentage is much larger than the males. Thirdly, the survey was done online and accessible to various, of people, to various peoples. Lastly, this project uses five dimensions to understand the meaning of brands, which are tangibility, assurance, reliability, responsiveness, and empathy. Other dimensions could be used. So for my implication, the findings of the study are important for healthcare managers to show what the Libyan patient perspective connects with the satisfaction in public hospitals. Lastly, the findings of the study can help public hospitals in Libya improve by understanding what the patient requires. 
So thank you very much for your attention. My name is Jared Hassier. I'm a fourth year grad student at the International Money University, studying business administration and majoring in finance and bank management. And the title of my graduation project is The Impact of Bank Specific Variables on Stability of Banks in the MENA Region. The content of the presentation is the research objectives, research importance, features problem, research structure, the methodology, the definition of variables, the regression model, the regression findings, key findings, implications and recommendations, and finally, the limitations. So the following objective and achievements of the study are to examine whether the capital has an impact on the bank stability and to also examine whether the size of a bank has an impact on the bank stability. Also to investigate the impact of loan ratio on the stability of banks and to determine the impact of the non-interest income on the bank stability. Also to identify the cost management if it has an impact and to assess whether lost loan reserves has an impact on the bank stability. So the importance of this study is that there is a lack of studies that examine banking sector, especially in the MENA region. While as the findings of the study are very beneficial for various stakeholders, such as the policymakers, managers, shareholders, and also the future investors. So this study outlines the importance of the banking sector in MENA as this region needs to transform its uh, oil-based economy from an oil-based to a market-based economy. So the research problem is that profitability and stability are very crucial for survival in any economy in the world. So the stability of banks helps to improve macroeconomic factors such as the GDP and the inflation. So examining bank-specific variables provide implications that will be in favor for a sound banking sector. So the research structure that uh, this study, this study is actually sectioned into five chapters. The first chapter is to provide an introduction to the topic. Uh, and the second chapter is the literature review and MENA background. Uh, the chapter three is data and methodology. Chapter four is empirical findings. So uh, this chapter provides findings and uh, discussion about the study. Chapter five, conclusion and policy implication. This chapter outlines the conclusion and policy implication for various and different stakeholders. The methodology of the study is to examine how bank-specific variables impact the stability of banks. The study collected data from 149 banks from 11 MENA countries. Variable used in the study were collected from the Bank Scope and the World Bank Outlook for the period 2000 to 2015. So here are the definition of variables. First is the Z-score, which is a using term on equity. Uh, and it is also the source of data is from the bank scope. The EQAS, which is the capital, the variable to measure capital. And the LN size, which is the size of a bank, natural algorithm for total assets to represent the bank size. And the loan asset is to measure liquidity of computed uh, as the loans to total assets. Lost loan reserves is the loan loss reserved to gross loans to measure the credit quality. So the non-interest income is the income diversification. The cost is the cost uh, to income ratio. The GDBGR, which is the higher GDB growth rate, indicates higher economic growth. And the constant GDB, which is the GDB constant, is the gross domestic product at a constant price. And finally, the real inflation rate measured by the growth of consumer price index. The Bilibro regression model is to accomplish the objective of the study. The Z-score equals the beta zero, which is the EQAS, which is the capital, plus uh, beta one, the LN size, which is the bank size, plus beta two, the loan asset, plus beta three, the lost loan reserves, plus the NIAA, which is the non-interest income, plus the cost, plus the inflation percent, plus the uh, LN GDB G growth. The ordinary least square regression method has been employed to examine the impact of bank specific variables on this previous study, which is the OLS regression mo model. Here are the regression findings. Uh, 
based on my results of this study, which is the EQAS turned out to be positive and which is positively impact on the bank specific variables. Also, the cost is positive, whereas the loan as uh, asset and the lost loan reserves are negative. Also, the bank size is negative and the non interest income is negative. The GDP growth is also negative. Here is another uh, test, which is the inflation also negative. And yes, here are the number of observations, the p-value and the r-squared. So the key findings of this study is that capital adequacy has a positive and significant impact on the bank stability, whereas uh, the bank size is negatively influenced by the stability of banks. Uh, the loan ratio negatively reduces bank stability, which is turned negative in the results. Non-interest income has a negative impact on bank stability. Also, cost management has a positive impact uh, based on my results. So the loss loan reserves negatively impact the bank stability. Banking stability is negatively influenced by the macroeconomic variables, the GDP and the inflation rate. The implication and recommendation of the study provides, uh, these findings of the study provide regulators policymakers and bank managers bodies better insight into the stability and efficiency of the bank and its behavior. Policymakers in the MENA region should begin developing effective policies to convert the economy from an oil-based economy to a market-based economy. Well-capitalized banks are able to avoid bankruptcy and withstand potential financial distress. As I said, um, capital in my results has a positive uh, impact on the stability of banks. MENA banks need to reconsider their credit of lending. Size of a bank needs to receive much attention from central banks and banks managers. So the limitation of the study that the data set covers a limited period only from the 2000 until 2015, which is considered an old set of data as we live in the 2000, 2020. Up to date, there is no sufficient number of studies that examine banking issues in this region. Other valuables as, such as non-performing loans and spending on bank completes were not collected due to the unavailability on the bank scope database. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Arsel Mogherbi. I'm a student in the Department of Marketing. Today I will present my graduation project, uh, which is talk about the effect of pricing strategies and consumer purchasing decision in Libya. These are my content, uh, start from intro, uh, introduction, theoretical framework, literature review, research methodology, data analysis, result limitation, and finally, recommendation and implication. So, as introduction, price is one of the four B's of the marketing mix, which, which is the product, price, place, promotion. Price is only element of the marketing mix, mix which uh, produce revenue. All other elements represent cost. Moreover, the price strategy is the method, model, approach used to establish the best price for the product or service. The price has a major influence on consumer purchasing decision in the increase in both for sale volume and revenue. A pricing strategy play an important role in, stimul in stimulating new customers to try offer products and significantly increase the consumer purchases. These are definition keywords for my graduation project. Price, strategy, price strategy, consumer, decision making, and version decision. Then you have a research problem. In Libya, now or today, company, investors, brand manager use, use a pricing strategy in their daily life. But there is no evidence to show if the pricing strategy affects consumer version decision in Libya. In the absence for any previous resource or study the, uh, in the same contents, the, the purpose of this study was determine if the pricing strategy have effect on consumer in Libya and whether it's the positive or negative impact. Impact. These are research objectives to identify to what extent consumer in Libya understand the, uh, the meaning of a price. To identify to what extent consumer in Libya understand the importance of price. To identify to what uh, extent pricing method has an effect of, on consumer version decision. 
to identify to what extent demographic information create different response of consumer. These are research hypotheses. Then you have a research important. In the research important, two showing point from the theoretical and the practical perspective. From the practical, companies, shop, investors, brand managers uh, will benefit from this project in now in different pricing strategies to choose from according to their product or service. And from the theoretical, this project is important for the consumer or customers uh, to deal with the offer product and service. In the chapter uh, for theoretical framework, uh, you talk about the price concept, the importance of a price, and the effect of a pricing strategy on consumer version decisions. And you talk about the different pricing strategies that the different company use, such as uh, uh, penetration pricing strategies, uh, uh, seasonal pricing strategies, uh, odd pricing strategies, bundle pricing strategies, and uh, uh, low pricing strategies, psycho uh, psychological pricing strategies, and so on. Then you have a literature review. 20 papers were reviewed in this project on the same topic, the effect of a pricing strategy on consumer version decision. 80% uh, of them use quantitative method by distributing online questionnaire to collect data. Only 20% 20, 20 use qualitative method, and most of the paper was used random sample method. Based on the funding, 95 of the paper reviewed have the same result that agree with the three dimension or three um, variable in this project. The consumer understand the meaning of the price and the consumer understand the importance of a price and the, if the, and, the, and there are effect of a pricing strategy on consumer version decision. Only 5% for one paper published in India uh, show that there are different in the result between the age group from 15 to 30 are more attractive toward the brand and do, and do not consider the price. Okay, then in the research methodology, the quantitative method was used in this project start by distributing uh, online questionnaire uh, on, uh, on different uh, social media platform on different area of Libya. Uh, the questionnaire, in the questionnaire, a five point liquor scale was used uh, from strongly agree to strongly disagree. In population in 2022, the, um, the current population of Libya was uh, is uh, 7 million. Sample, according to this table by Morgan, uh, when the population more than 1 million, the, uh, the, the sample size should be 384. And the total response in this project was 393. Data collection tool. The questionnaire is the tool for the data collection in this project. The questionnaire was divided into two sections. The first section is the talk about the uh, demographic information about the gender, nationality, uh, occupation, income, monthly income. Um, and the second section is divided into three parts. Uh, according to the three dimension in this project. Uh, the importance of a price, the price concepts, and the effect of a pricing strategy on consumer version decision. Moreover, the questionnaire was designed under the, under the supervision Dr. Sabri Karagli and was reviewed for more validity. The questionnaire was distributed by Arabic and English version. Data analysis. The data were analyzed by using statistical package of social science SPS version uh, 28 that is used in this project to analyze the data are the reliability Kronbach alpha test, frequency test, descriptive test, and uh, normality test. According to the normality test, the hypothesis test dependent, of, uh, dependent on the finding of the normality test, the following hypothesis tests are used. Binomial test for the overall hypothesis. 
Manuathly test was used to two independent variables. Chris Calwell test was used to various independent variables. Uh, these tests for the test for hypothesis according to the data are the normally uh, distributed uh, non-parametric in the first and second dimension. One sample t-test, independent sample test, and ANOVA test for the non -para, uh, for the parametric distribution in the third dimension. In this project, use both the test of parametric and non-parametric distribution. Instrument reliability, three dimension is more than uh, seven, 70 persons. Uh, this study is reliable. Demographic information analysis, according to gender, nationality, place of residency, age group, material status, education level, monthly income, occupation, test of normality. Uh, there, in this project, there are three dimension or three variable. Second and uh, first and second dimension is less than uh, to uh, 0 0.05 uh, is non-parametric and third dimension is more than 0 0.05 uh, uh, is parametric distribution. Statistical descriptive for first uh, dimension, second dimension and third dimension, hypothesis testing in the result. Um, in this project, several result have emerged as following according to the demographic information. And in general, the participant understand the meaning of the bar, uh, bride. The participant understand. Uh, the participant agree that the bride uh, always correlate with the quality. The participant understand the importance of a bride. The participant agree that the quality is the most important element. Uh, the participant understand the effect of uh, pricing method on consumer purchasing decision. The participant agree always prefer to buy product when there uh, with their a discount given. Uh, in the demographic information, gender, nationality, occupation does create a difference in the response of consumer. In the limitation, the first limitation of this project is lack of previous paper in the contents of the pricing strategy and consumer purchasing decision. Second, the study focused on Libyan and non-Libyan consumer purchasing decision dependent on pricing strategy in Libya, but the most responsive were Libyan uh, thirdly, the most participants are female. Lastly, the time to complete this project is limited. Finally, recommendation and application. I recommend to Libyan investors, company brand managers, and companies that intend to launch a new product in Libya should understand the impact of each pricing method or strategy to determine the best pricing strategy uh, and how to use in the Libyan market. Finally, the, the participants agree with the price, which is always related with the quality. I'm a fourth year graduate student at Limo, and today I'm going to talk about barriers of implementing total quality management in Libyan construction project. So these are my contents. So we will be starting with an introduction. So as an introduction, Libyan construction industry uh, faces several problems in today's competitive market. One of the biggest problem, a problem that they do not have the capability to implement total quality management in Libya. So here we have definition of TQM stages. The first one, quality control. The second one, quality assurance. The third one, quality uh, management. And the last one, total quality management, which will lead us to the continuous improvement. So here we have a research problem. So as a research problem, uh, Sharif conducted a research in 2010, and he explored a barriers. So this uh, research will investigate if the barriers still exist or not. So here we have research objective. The first one to identify the concept of TQM, the second one to identify the importance of TQM, the third one to identify the barriers of TQM, and the last one to identify if there are any significant difference among the uh, participant of uh, demographic information. And uh, here we have the uh, research hypothesis, and uh, here we have the uh, research importance. So research importance, so it's basically whose total quality management importance too, so it's important to managers, uh, employee satisfaction, and everyone have any, everyone related to the TQM concept. So as a literature review, 
according to the 15 Bayer uh, reviewed, all of them were quantitative. So all of them used a quantitative research method to gain the results. So as a theoretical framework, here we have what does total quality management do and the key elements of TQM, which was uh, competence, training, teamwork, leadership, recognition, and communication as a research methodology. So a quantitative research uh, approach were used in this graduation project and, uh, and was designed under the supervision of Dr. Sabri Akirli and was obtained 101 respondents. So it's basically the, the survey was divided into two sections. The first one was about the demographic information and the second one about, was consists of three dimensions. The first one, uh, TQM definition, the second one, TQM importance, and the third one, TQM barriers. Uh, here we have, the, and this is the liquor scale how we have used for this graduation project, which is contains of five points. Uh, here we have population ensemble. So as a population ensemble, the researcher found it difficult to get the official information about the population of uh, decision makers in Libyan construction project. So that's why the project was just focused in Benghazi city. So as a data collection method, uh, it was uh, obtained from Al-Sharif in 2010 and it was uh, supervised by Dr. Sabri al -Kirli. Uh, here we have the data analysis method. We uh, were using an SPSS23. So these are the tests that we have used in its reliability, frequency test, descriptive statistic, and normality test. So according to the normality test, the data were non-parametric. So we used binomial test, Manhattan test, and Criscale Wallace. So first of all, we have an reliability. As you all can see here, it's all above 0.7 which uh, means that it's reliable and more than acceptable. Uh, here we have demographic information about gender, which showed that the majority were male by 90.1%. And uh, here for the age group, social states, uh, place residents, where the majority of uh, most of the respondents were from large city, and just eight were from a small city. Uh, here we have educational level, most of them were uh, B, a C. Uh, here we have work nature, specialization, and years of experience, which uh, most of them were between one and five years. So for the normality test, as you all can see here, all the dimension, TQM dimension, uh, importance of TQ, um, the importance of TQM, barrier TQM, and overall, it's all were significant with uh, less than 0.05. Uh, here we have descriptive statistic for TQM concept. As we all see here, the overall is 2.2, which, uh, which means that the participants disagree with the fact that they understand the concept of TQM. And the other one for TQM importance, it's basically the same with the concept, 2.3 and with the overall, which means that the participants disagree with the fact that they understand or they are aware of the importance of TQM. You know, we will ha here we have uh, financial barriers with uh, overall with four, which means that the participants agree that there is a financial barrier in their company. Uh, here we have culture barriers. It's, it's uh, with overall 3.9, which also uh, agree with the fact that there is a culture barriers in their company. Uh, here we have internal organization barriers with a 3.9, which also accept this dimension and agree uh, here we have the human resource barriers with the overall 3.9. So they agree with the fact that there is human resource barrier in their company and external uh, barriers with overall 3.8, which leads to uh, agree also with this dimension. Uh, here we have uh, hypothesis tested for the TQM definition. It's, uh, we all, as we all can see here, it's less point zero point zero, uh, sorry, 0 0.5, which will lead us to accept H1 and reject H0. And the same for the importance of TQM, uh, zero, uh, it's below 0 0.5. So we will accept H0 and reject, uh, sorry, accept H1 and reject H0. And the same for the barriers of implementing. This is the overall barriers. Now here we have financial barrier, which also accept H1 because it's less than uh, 0 0.5. 
uh, here culture barrier, we will also accept H1 and reject H0. And here internal organization barriers, with uh, it's uh, basically less than 0 0.5, so we will accept H1 and reject H0 too. And the human resource barriers, basically it's the same, uh, less than 0 0.5, so we will accept H1. And here the same for external barriers. And here we have TQM and construction projects, basically the same with uh, less than 0 0.5, so we will accept H1 and reject H0. And here we have man witness test. So, uh, so it's basically there's significance different among uh, all the dimension. And uh, the same, uh, and here we have uh, two with significance different, and one which is the barrier from the mid total quality management. The Libyan construction project was the not statistical difference. And here we have the second social states for Marwatni, place of residence. It's uh, all was significance, and here uh, barriers were not significant, and it's all significant right here. And for the educational level, uh, there is significance different. There are no significant difference of the bar of TQM dimension. And here we have the second one of the educational level. And the same for uh, work nature. And the second one, work nature, this specialization, year of experience. And so as a result, no statistical uh, was found among gender. Place of residence, significant and significant was found among social stage, age, educa age, educational level, work nature, specialization, and year of experience. This is the result of demographic information. And here there is the summary of hypothesis test. Uh, here we have the limitation. So the limitation, as I said before, it's basically the biggest limitation was the research was just focused in Benghazi city. As a conclusion, unfortunately, the same barriers that Sharif conducted in 2010 is still existing with financial barriers, cultural barriers, and everything else. Uh, thank you. Hello, my name is Abdurrahman Hamouda. I'm a fourth year graduate student at LIMO. Uh, I specialize in business administration and my graduation project, which is the effect of training on employees' job performance. This is my project. These are the contents. We have introduction, definition, research problem, research objectives, research hypothesis, research importance, the theoretical framework, literature review, research methodology, population sample, data collection tool, data analysis, instrument reliability, demographic information analysis, normality tests, the hypothesis tests, the Man Whitney, Cross Carwallis, and results, and demographic data. This is the summary of the hypothesis, and finally the limitations. So as an introduction, Training is a well-known topic in all organizations, and it should be always taken into account. Training helps organizations develop its organization and become better and gain more profits and uh, minimize the losses. It also creates a huge competitive advantage gap. These are the definitions. This is the definition of training. This is the definition of performance. This is the definition of employee's performance. So the research problem that I faced in this project was that not everyone knows the meaning of training and the concepts of training. They, they don't understand the training enough and how to apply it in the organizations. Recently, a paper in 2019 was conducted on the banking sector, which uh, had the same findings as the findings I had in this uh, graduation project. These are my research, uh, research objectives to determine the meaning of training from employees' perspective in Libyan organization, to determine the impact of training on employees' performance from their point of view in the Libyan organization, to measure the degree of difference in the respondents' response that could attribute to demographic factors in the Libyan organizations. These are my hypotheses. We have three hypotheses, which are employees are not aware of the meaning of training in Libyan organizations, Employees are aware of the meaning of living organizations. Trainers have no impact uh, on the performance <coughs> to their point of view of the organizations. Uh, employees have performance from their point of view. There are no significant difference, and there are significant difference among demographic information. This research uh, project is important for mainly managers because they need to read it and apply training in their organizations, and mostly uh, for 
officers and uh, employees if they want to improve themselves. These are my literature review. Uh, I reviewed 19 papers from which 16 were uh, quantitative research methods uh, and two were qualitative research methods. This is the framework, this is the training framework. This is the influence of training in the organization. These are the empl employees' performance. So as a research uh, methodology, I used a quantitative research method. I introduced a questionnaire into the market of Libya, uh, which was tested over the internet. So as a whole, Libya's population is 7 million. The sample size that I took of this population was the 231 respondents. As a collecting data collecting tool, we, uh, the questionnaire was uh, divided into two parts. First part was the demographic information. Second part was divided into two dimensions. The first part was the concept of training. The second part was the influence of training in the organization. These are the tests that we used. We used the reliability test to test the Chromebox Alpha. We test frequency test to indicate the difference among participants based on the demographic data. Descriptive statistics to measure the overall mean of each dimension and the normality test to see if our tests are parametric or non-parametric. As our tests turned out to be non-parametric in the overall dimension, we used these three tests, binomial test, Mann-Whitney test, and Kruskal-Wallis test. This is the instrument liability test. We do this test to see if our information that we collected from the questionnaire is reliable in each dimension or not. So as you can see, in training concept is 0.9, which means it's highly reliable. And in the second uh, dimension, the influence of training is 0.947, which means both dimensions are reliable. These are demographic informations. As you can see, there were more males than, than females. The number of males was greater. This is the demographic information for nationality. This is for age group, for measured status for location, for education level, types of jobs, position of work. This is how many programs they have participated in in the last uh, past three years. This is how, what's the value of the pro uh, programs they took. And this is the nature of business. This is the normality test. As you can see, the normality test has a SIG of 0, 0.000, which makes our test non-parametric. So we use the binomial test, cross car wallace and the man with knee test. This is the descriptive statistics. This is the overall mean, which is 4.119, which means that it's, it strongly agrees with the, the respondents agree with the concept of training with this dimension based on the five point Likert scale. This is the descriptive statistics for the influence of training. These are the hypothesis tests. As you can see, for this hypothesis test for the concept of training, the SIG also is 0, 0.000, which means that we reject H0, which is employees are aware of the meaning of training in their organization, and except employees are not aware of the meaning of training. This is the same for the dimension. Here we, uh, we reject H0 and accept H1. These are the Mann-Whitney Man tests. For the Mann-Whitney test, we do it for if there's two options, two variables. For example, if it's age, if there is male or female, we use the Mann-Whitney test. Another example, if, if it's Libyan or non-Libyan, we use the Mann-Whitney test. If it's more than three variables, then we use the cross wallace test. Say, for example, here we have age, we have 18 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. There's more than two variables. These are the cross wallace tests. So as a result, you can see that there are more males than females in this project, but that doesn't mean that males need more training than females. They are both equal, they both need the same amount of training as each other. These are the results of the demographic analysis. These are the summary of hypothesis. So as a limitation, According to Craig's and Morg's table, it states that if the population is more than 1 million, then the sample size should be 384. But unfortunately, in the society of Libya, they still don't understand the concept of training well, so I only collected 231 respondents during this study. 
Secondly, there was no previous papers on the topic of training in Libya. Maybe it was due to the fact that they still don't know the concept of training and they don't understand training well enough to apply it into the organizations. And finally, the time of the study was limited. As a recommendation, I recommend each and every person and next researcher to look at more subtopics, for example, add uh, customer satisfactions, add uh, job satisfactions, to make the topic more wider. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Shahda Zanati, I'm a finance student and today I'm going to talk about my graduation bro project which is uh, the holiday effect in Bursa, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. uh, those, are, those are my outlines, start with introduction, research review, methodology, results, conclusion, research limitation and recommendation. As we all know that Malaysia is a multicultural uh, country so they have many religions that's why I chose uh, several uh, holidays, which are uh, Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fatr, Christmas, Chinese New Year, and Edwin. Uh, in introduction, we have the research problem, uh, which is there is a direct impact on the stock market on investor decision. So uh, the decision of the investor, uh, it's affect the stock market. It will, uh, it will worth examining whether there is a holiday effect in Borsa Malaysia or not. As we all know that uh, lots of focus uh, go to the calendar effect and there is no uh, focus on the holiday effect. So the research aims to investigate the test whether there is an impact of the religion holidays in the stock market or not from the period from uh, 1st of December uh, 2010 to the 13th of December 2016. Those of my research objectives uh, to determine whether the monthly stock return for Eid al-Adha holiday are higher than the monthly stock return in the month in Borsa, Malaysia during the study, study period. So uh, we, we're going to de determine the five holidays if there is an impact on the stock market or not. Those of my literature review, so when I start to do my literature review, I studied, uh, I was reading 20 papers, 20 academic papers, so some of them uh, support uh, the holiday effect and the others are against. As we, we can see here, uh, some of the studies support and the other against for the holidays. Those of my research hypothesis, uh, there is a significant difference in the monthly stock return on Eid al-Adha holiday in Borsa Malaysia over the study period. So we, we just want to investigate if there is a holiday effect or not in the post Malaysia. Come to the uh, research methodology. So uh, my data it was quantitative uh, documentary data, and it's as I, as I said before, it's uh, from uh, 2010 to 2016. Uh, we start with uh, 468 companies in 2010, and we end by to, uh, 643 country uh, company in 2016. So I, I use this uh, method to, anal uh, to, uh, to, to analyze the data. There's a test called durban Watson test. This is to, uh, to test if there is a correlation between the data or not. As we can see here, the R-square was 0 0.833, which is mean uh, there is a, a good correlation between them. And durban Watson was 2.075 which is more than two, and that means there is a high, uh, there is a high relationship between them. Those are my uh, results. After I did the SPSS uh, test, as we can see here, there is no, uh, there, there is no effect except to Christmas one. It has, uh, it has negative, uh, negative effect. So uh, in, in the results, the, the section before it covered the investigation of the holiday, which is there is no holiday effect except the Christmas, if the Christmas ones, and it has a negative uh, effect. In conclusion, uh, this is my uh, the table of the literature review. So I I compare between them. The green ones, that means there is an effect, and the other ones, there is no effect. 
So all of them, there is no effect, which is uh, they support uh, they support the ones they has no effect, except the Christmas ones, which is the last one, which uh, and they ex um, the supported ones there is a negative effect. Those are my limitations. Uh, the study period uh, it was uh, the study period was from 2010 to 2016, which is old. So because of the data, I, I, I can't access uh, the, um, the, Malaysian, uh, the Malaysian company's data. So that's why I chose uh, the, the period it was uh, old. And they use the quantitative uh, data. So if they're going to do it next time, they can use both of them, quantitative and qualitative. Recommendations. The study results should not be used to make any investigation decision since decision should be uh, after a careful research and conclusion. So, uh, as I said before, um, the period it was the period it was uh, old, and the the, um, the the papers I used most of them they were they were old because there is no too much study about uh, the topic. Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Abdurrahman Fitouri. I'm fourth uh, graduate student uh, from Limu University. Uh, and uh, today I'm going to present my graduation topic, which is risk management in private construction companies in Benghazi City. These are my contents, introduction, definition, research problem, research objective, research hypothesis, research importance, theoretical framework, teacher review, research methodology, population, sample, data collection tools, data analysis, instrument reliability, demographic information analysis, Normality test, hypothesis testing, Man Whitney test, Kraskar Wallis test, results, demographic data, summary of tested hypothesis, discussion, location, and limitation. First of all, introduction. According to Tang, risk management is an important aspect uh, of the decision making process in the construction and now is widely recognized as essential tools in project management. As I said, risk management is one of the most important uh, aspects in the, uh, in the construction industry and uh, project management. Uh, these are the definitions, risk and risk management, construction projects, and Libyan construction industry. So this is the research problem. Uh, the focus of this study is on uh, risk management field in private construction projects in Benghazi due to the fact that construction project risk management are exposed to change. Uh, Libyan construction projects face same, if not worse, obstacles. Uh, uh, since the early 1970s, uh, Libyan constructors la had lack of experience in managing construction projects has been a constant issue, according to Bujanah and Eastern. Uh, these are my uh, research objectives. Uh, to identify the risk which private construction are exposed in the city of Benghazi, to identify is if there is any significant difference among participants, to put forward some implementation and uh, recommendations. Uh, these are my research hypotheses. And this is my research uh, importance. The focus, uh, as I said, the focus of the study is on risk management in uh, private construction industry. Uh, these are my theoretical framework. Uh, I put some definitions about the financial risks and legal risks, time risks and management risks, and the human resource risks and design risks. And these are my literature review. And this is my research methodology. I, uh, a quantitative research approach is used in, gradu in this graduation project. An online survey was designed under the supervision of Dr. Sabri Kirgli, was distributed among uh, constructing and construction companies in Benghazi, Libya. Uh, additionally, uh, collected 86 responses. Uh, furthermore, the survey was divided into two sections. First, demographic data were collected, and then seven dimensions were measured, which are human resource risks, technical risks, resource risks, and financial risks, and legal risks, and management risks. Uh, this is the five flicker scales that I use in uh, the questionnaire. 
and uh, uh, this is the population. It was difficult to get an official information about the population of all construction projects and engineers in Libya. That, uh, that is why the study targeted Benghazi cities. Uh, I managed to get information from seven construction companies. Uh, this is the sample. And this is the companies that I distributed the, my questionnaire, uh, data collection tools, uh, data analysis, the data an an analyzed using a statistical package of social science SPSS version 23. The test is used in this project analysis the data are reliability test Chromebox Alpha, frequ uh, frequency tests indicated difference among participants based on demographic data, demographic statistics uh, to measure the overall mean of each dimension, and normality test to measure if the data for a parametric or non-parametric uh, distribution. Uh, this is the, uh, the normality test indicated the data follow a non-parametric distribution. The following hypothesis tests are used, binomial test, Mann-Whitney test, kruskal wallis test. Uh, this is my instrument reliability. According to the result, the reliability test uh, tests, uh, tests all of the dimension in the project are high. The Chromebox Alpha value for each dimension was more than acceptable percentage, which is 0 0.7. Uh, this is the demographic information, uh, the table of gender, and table of age group, and table of social status, and place of residence, and educations, occupation, position, and speciality. Uh, and this is my norma normality test. The table 10 reveals that the data is not normally distributed. Furthermore, the hypothesis test of the study will be tested a non-parametric test, which I told you before that, that I used the binomial test, Mann-Whitney test, and kruskal wallis test. And this is the descriptive statistics for human resource risks and, uh, the, uh, and technical risks and the resource risks, financial risks, legal risks, management risks, and time risks. And this is the hypothesis uh, binomial test. These are the binomial tests. And this is the Mann-Whitney test. This is the kraskow wallis The result, the Mann-Whitney test indicated that there is a statistical significance in terms of gender that can be attributed to resource risk. Furthermore, no statistical significance was found among the remaining Mann-Whitney and kraskow wallis tests since the six uh, is less than 0 0.05. Uh, results demographic analysis, the data shows the respondents majority are male with 87.2% 87, 87 and with the age group of 25 at the 57% and the social status of the, uh, of it's natural with single and married 50-50 uh, and with 95% who lived in large cities and in terms of occupation, the majority of the participants are engineers with 60%. The results of descriptive statistics, uh, participants agree with the fact that they associated human resource with the risk management with the overall mean of 3.66. And participants are moderate with the fact that they associated with technical risk with risk management with overall mean of 9.91. Participants agree with the fact that they associated financial risks with the risk management with overall mean of 3.76. Participants are agree uh, with the fact that associated legal, legal risk with the risk management with overall mean of 3.52. And participants agree with the fact they associated with management risk with risk management with overall uh, mean of 3.51. And participants agree with the fact they associated time risk with the risk management with overall mean of 3.83. This is the summary of tested hypothesis. And then and my limitation uh, for this uh, graduation project. The graduation project has accurately several, several limitations where the, sample were uh, where, where the sample was collected only in Benghazi city. The result of the study only concerned the targeted sample. The sample size was small. The male percentage of 
respondents is larger than female. So the time available to complete this project was limit, uh, limited. Uh, the study only targeted private companies. And the recommendation for further, uh, further studies to achieve gaining more responses in the survey, additionally, evaluation of the location should be internationally or all around the border, Libyan borders, and, uh, ex uh, and to examine more different types of sector. Furthermore, public sector investigation should be considered. Uh, and thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Sanad Najam. I'm in the administration major. The project is about the relationship between time management and performance of LIMO stakeholders. So first we have the contents, starting from the introduction and ending with recommendations and implications. So first is the introduction. Introduction. Manage management theories began to focus on the importance of time management in the beginning of the 20th century because it is essential to measure uh, performance using time. The passage of time is strictly linked to work and production. So basically, depending on how much work you've done is a result of how effective you've managed your time. Here we have the definitions included in the project. We have impact, we have time, we have management, performance, stakeholders, and LIMO. Research problem. So time is a valuable resource because it is finite, dynamic, and irreversible. This creates value in managing our time effectively. So performance and productivity can be maximized. So uh, al Zalad uh, investigated a research in 2015 issuing the effects of time management on employees' performance. The findings of the study show that there is a, an effect of performance affected by time, but since 2015 there were no study involving the same issue in Libya, therefore this project aims to find out if performance is affected by time management using a big unit of analysis that adds to the findings of this study. So now we have the research objectives, first to examine the awareness of time management in LIMO, then to investigate the relationship between time management and performance of the stakeholders. Finally, to identify if there are any significant differences among uh, participants' respondents that could be attributed to the demographic factors. These are the research hypotheses that are developed from the research objectives. Now we have the significance of the research. As mentioned, the study gives a better understanding of time management and how it can influence performance. The study also aims to educate the stakeholders of LIMO on how to manage their time. The research adds to previous studies using a big unit, bigger unit of analysis, which gives significance to the research. Literature review. So 20 papers were reviewed in this research, issuing the impact of time management on performance. The following were based on the literature. There is a link between time management and performance, and to achieve uh, maximum individual performance, time has to be managed effectively. Increased Performance can lead to better organizational planning and goal achievement. Effective time management results in job satisfaction and job retention. Many of the employees in public sector do not manage their time because they have the thought of being hired for life, therefore they don't have the motivation to manage their time. Now we have the theoretical framework. So only uh, relevant topics were included in the theoretical uh, part. We have research methodology. So primary data collection method was adopted. The use of uh, social media learning network and online learning systems and the QR code to distribute the questionnaire. This resulted in adopting random sampling method. Questionnaires included two dimensions. Demographic questions were included, of course. We have the first uh, dimension was about the time management concept. The second one was about the relationship between time management and performance. The questionnaire was distrib distributed in English and Arabic. So, and the population of LIMO stakeholders uh, were a total of 2,488 stakeholders. The study was only able to receive 206 responses. 
instrument validity. So the questionnaire was adapted from the Richard paper, Issuing Time Management and its effects on employees' performance, then was edited by Dr. Sabri to fit the targeted participants. So now the data analysis. The data were analyzed using the SPSS software. The data in the study was evaluated using the reliability, Chromeback alpha frequencies to identify differences between participants based on demographic data. Then we have Samira Nova, Binomial, Man Whitney, and Crystal Wallace. Instrument reliability. This, this table shows the reliability of the tests. Here we can see the reliability of the first dimension time management concept to be 0.75, which reveals that it is highly reliable, which is highly reliable since it is about 0.7. Now, and this shows the reliability of the second dimension, which is 0.94, which is excellently reliable. After testing both, uh, both of the dimensions, we can see that they are 0.9, which both, which both identify as excellently reliable. Now we have the normality test. Here in the normality uh, test, we can see that the first dimension is less than 0.01 and the second one as well, which shows that the, that the test is not normally distributed, which then can tell us that the research continues to non-parametric tests. So we have the demographic information analysis. First, for the gender, we can see that there are no significant differences in the gender. Same goes for nationality, age group, martial status, educational level, occupation, and now going to the descriptive statistics. Here we can see the descriptive statistics of the first dimension time measurement concept. We can see all of the we can see all of the means here uh, above three. Only two. Only two questions were uh, below three, and the overall mean shows that it is 3.65, which means the majority agree. Uh, which means the majority agree on the questions. This is for the second dimension relationship between time management and performance, which has a, uh, a greater mean than the first dimension. The overall mean is 4.24, which shows also the majority agree on the questions. Binomial test. This is binomial test for the first dimension. It shows the binomial test indicating there are any significant differences. Here we reject each, each, uh, the, we reject the hypothesis. There is no awareness of time management among respondents among the stakeholders, and we accept that there is an awareness. So this table shows that there is an awareness of time management in, on the stakeholders. Here, this is for the second dimension, showing the relationship between time management and performance. Here we can see that it's accepting that there is a relationship between time management and stakeholders' performance. Here is for the, gen by, uh, the Man Whitney test for time management and the gender. Then we have nationality, age group, martial status, educational level, and the occupation. Now for the second dimension, for gender, nationality, age group, martial status, education and level, and occupation. The results of the study shows that stakeholders are aware of time management. Stakeholders didn't receive training on how to manage their time. There is a relationship between time management and performance. Performance is a result of effective time management. And finally, there are no significant differences among respondents' view that could be attributed to the demographic factors. Limitations, the, the results of the study only concern the stakeholders of LIMO, lack of previous study as mentioned in Libya, uh, issuing the same topic. According to Morgan's table, the study was only able to reach 206, but according to Morgan, it should reach 335, which is a limitation to the study. The data finally was not normally distributed, which is also a limitation. Recommendations, the study recommends stakeholders to receive training and how to manage their time, and to make a list on, uh, on the events that waste their time. Also, minimize multitasking and focus on a, one task at a time. Finally, the usage of technology can help finish activities faster. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Najla Dahmani. I'm a student at Healthcare Management Department. 
Today I will present my graduation project, which is Student Satisfaction on Dewey's Healthcare Center Services at Kent State University using Servaqua model. This is the table of content from introduction to recommendation. In introduction, in introduction, the patient seeks health care from institution where they believe their needs will be met, which means that the patient is part of the health care services process. Patient satisfaction can be used as a measure to assess the quality of care in institution. We have two definitions, quality of care in hospital, and patient satisfaction. A research problem, healthcare customers' satisfaction doesn't receive a similar approach as other services sectors. Also, research lack a consensus about the factors relating to patient satisfaction. Therefore, this study focused on studying the effect the effect of factors on patient satisfaction such as education level, major, age, and nationality. A research objective to measure Kent State University student satisfaction on the quality of Dewey's healthcare center services in the USA. To test the effect of demographic factors on the satisfaction level among the university students. To put forward some recommendation and application for theory and practice. These are the research hypothesis. The research importance, this study very useful for academic and professional purpose. The Ministry of Health and American Medical Center can also benefit from the results of this research. It will also enable the healthcare institution know their strengths and weaknesses and to develop a plan to improve the quality of services. This is the theory, theoretical framework, literature review, a research methodology. We have search strategy and study selection, participants, inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria, study design, data collection and calculation of some sample size. In 2022, the total number of students enrolled at Kent State University was 6,760. It's almost 7,000. So according to Craig and Morgan's table, sample size should be 364 with a, uh, a 95 percent confidence level and error margin of 5 percent. This study used a questionnaire called the cervical scale on a five-point lake scale. The questionnaire was launched in English online using Google form and received 336 responses. In data analysis, I used SPSSS version 25 to analyze the data. data. This is the reliability test table. We have demographic information analysis. This table shows the gender distribution, nationality distribution, age distribution, major distribution, and education level distribution. This is the normality test. This shows the value is less than 0 0.05. That means the data is non-parametric. We have descriptive statistics. This table shows descriptive statistics related to tangibility, to reliability, <clears throat> to response, assurance, and to empathy. This is of hypothesis. As what I mentioned, the data is non-parametric. So I used the three tests, the binomial test, the Mann-Whitney test, and the cross quals test. This is the binomial test that shows we reject all null hypotheses and accept the alternative hypothesis. This for 
more details. Man would need test according to gender, according to nationality. And we have Koshkal will test according to age, according to education level, and according to major with the five dimension. In the result, we have five main points. So according to the cervical scale, males were more satisfied with the clinic's overall operation than females. The findings shows that those between the age of uh, 20 and 23 were the less content, while those between the age of 26 and above were the most satisfied. The result shows that students enrolled in the College of Public Health were the less satisfied while the while the students enrolled in the College of Art and Science were the most satisfied. The findings reveal that education level and nationality have a little effect on college sats student satisfaction level. Although there was a minor change, it was not substantial. This the findings shows that the five dimension of the scale have a sub substantial link with the patient satisfaction. This indicates that when the hospital system provides tangibility, reliability, response, assurance, and empathy, patient will be more satisfied. The limitation, the first, is that there is a significant difference between the symbol of males and females. The second is the lack of similar techniques that allows us to examine the concurrent validity of our findings by measuring the level of satisfaction within the same group. The third is absent of medical history of each participant. A recommendation study is needed to explain how the cost of service affects patient satisfaction judgment. Alternatively, which variables are associated with one another and which factors do not affect the patient overall pleasure. It would be fantastic to con conduct the same research in various clinics and hospitals to evaluate patient care in various healthcare systems, such as public versus private pra practices, uh, private clinic versus hospital clinic, at newly graduating doctors versus more experienced doctor. And that's it. Thank you so much for your attention. وفي الختام نتقدم بالشكر الجزيل لكل من ساهم في إنجاح هذا اليوم العلمي والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.